NVIDIA has introduced another GPU in the RTX 50 series, specifically the entry-level 50 class card known as the GeForce RTX 5050. This marks the seventh GPU in the series and contrary to earlier reports, NVIDIA altered its launch plans at the last moment. While the retail launch day remains largely the same, NVIDIA discreetly revealed it today along with its laptop version. However, the laptop variant is officially available for retail allowing laptop manufacturers to start selling their RTX 5050 laptop models from today, while the desktop version is set to launch in July. If you visit NVIDIA's website, you will find a dedicated page for the RTX 5050 showcasing all its specifications and details. However, NVIDIA has not yet disclosed its performance metrics. It is expected that these will be revealed a day prior to the retail launch, but we can speculate on the RTX 5050's position in the GPU hierarchy by comparing its specifications with those of its direct competitors. For example, the Arctic 5050 maintains the shader count of its predecessors featuring 2560 CUDA cores, but now utilizes an enhanced Blackwell architecture. It will employ the GB207 die and will come with 8GB of VRAM. Interestingly, both the laptop and desktop variants utilize different memory types which is unusual, and surprisingly, the desktop version has been downgraded. In contrast to the other RTX 50 series GPUs, this is the only one that incorporates GDDR6 memory, which is significantly slower than GDDR7. Yet, for the laptop variant, NVIDIA opted for GDDR7, prompting the question of why NVIDIA chose the slower GDDR6 for the desktop variant. This appears to be a strategic decision aimed at reducing production costs and maximizing overall profit. A clear difference exists between the GDDR6 memory in the RTX 5050 and its predecessors like the RTX 3050 and 4050. The RTX 3050 features a slower memory speed of 14 gigabits per second, while the RTX 4050 has a slightly faster memory speed of 18 gigabits per second. The RTX 5050 enhances this further with its memory clocked at 20 gigabits per second. This improvement should lead to some performance gains, but they may not be apparent if you disregard the generational upgrade of the GB207 GPU. On the other hand, the RTX 5050 laptop edition will utilize GDDR7 memory at 28 gigabits per second, suggesting that the laptop version is theoretically faster. However, there are differences in power limits. The laptop variant is rated at 115 watts, while the desktop card can reach 130 watts. With premium versions, this is particularly evident when you consider the generational uplift of the Blackwell cards, as the Blackwell architecture shows little improvement in IPC performance compared to the Arctic 40 GPUs. Computer-based evaluations have shown that both Ada Lovelace and Blackwell architectures are nearly identical in performance, and NVIDIA's only way to enhance the RTX 50 GPU's performance was by equipping them with faster VRAM, newer Tensor Cores, RT Cores, and similar technologies. Since the RTX 5050 is hardly an upgrade over the RTX 4050, it is unlikely to compete with the performance of the RTX 4060. Even though NVIDIA has not yet released benchmark data for the GPU, any figures they might provide will likely be misleading, as demonstrated by the RTX 4090 and RTX 5070 comparison. The performance at 4090 stands at 549. We possess several synthetic benchmarks for the RTX 5050 laptop. A Chinese media outlet has shared some 3D mark results for the RX 5050, comparing it to the 5060 and 5070 laptop GPUs. The RX 5050 does not fare well, being 20% slower than the RX 5060. In comparison to the RTX 4050 laptop GPU, the RTX 5050 is only 10% faster in time spy. On a positive note, the Port Royal score has significantly improved over the RTX 4050, showing a 27% increase. 
However, keep in mind that these benchmarks are synthetic and may not accurately reflect gaming performance. The challenge here is not just about performance. Pricing is also a major factor. Nvidia has a tendency to exploit the GPU market and once again we see the RTX 5050 priced at $249. This leads to the question why would anyone choose the RTX 5050 when there are faster 8GB GPUs like the RX 7600 and RX 4060 available for under $300. Additionally, the RP580, which is even faster than both of these GPUs, is available for less than $300 and offers more VRAM. The $249 price tag is perplexing, and it should be classified as a sub $200 GPU when compared to the RTX 5060, which is priced at $300. The most troubling aspect will be the custom OC models that AIBs will try to sell for nearly $300. It's important to remember that this isn't solely the fault of AIBs, as they struggle to profit from these cards, spending nearly 80% of the total production costs on the GPU and VRAM alone. Thus, I expect the RTX 5050 to remain on store shelves, just like the RTX 3050, especially when you can find significantly better GPUs for $300 or less. I really hope users avoid the RX $5500 unless Nvidia decides to reduce its price by $50. Should the RX 55 Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.